This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Hey everybody, I'm wearing a hat because... <laughs> Today, we are revisiting a classic. We are reviewing films based only on their opening shots. Pretty straightforward, right? No, no need for explanation, I'm just... I'm doing exactly that. Everybody say thank you, John, for getting these thanks, shots thanks, again. John, um, thanks, John. He's the best. Thanks. And yeah, if you guys want to play along, feel free to. But if you want to cheat and see what the movies are, I have them in the description below. I won't have them on screen this time. So without any further ado, let's start with the first one. Is that it? Ah, oh, this could be anything. I mean, there are so many fictional movies out there. Really, it gives me absolutely nothing. There's nothing to work off of here. Besides, I guess the font, which looks so unfinished. I mean, this looks like a, a placeholder for like a cooler graphic. I don't know why this is the final product, apparently. I think because of how straightforward it is, I, I might say this is a comedy, but because of how shitty it looks. <laughs> Maybe a low budget comedy, Clerks. Maybe this is how Clerk starts. I don't know. I'm going to say this is a pretty lousy movie, though. They're, they're, it's already off the start, just really lazy and doesn't look that good. Unfinished. Let's let's move on to the next one. That's so beautiful. Just makes me immediately feel okay. The Highlands of Scotland. I don't know why at first I thought Dark Crystal. It looks like a 70s thing. Uh, it looks a little bit older. But now that I'm looking at it again, it might be even older than that. This might be like 60s. Oh, it looks so beautiful though. I love this opening shot. I love the music. It feels like a fantasy type thing. Uh, what I will say about this is that it's a lovely opening shot. Uh, the branches look extremely nice with the fog. I'm already cozy while watching this. I'm already enjoying this experience. I'm gonna I'm gonna lock this one in as, as a good movie. At that time, everybody was tall, thin, and blonde. What the fuck? I'm a huge fan of shots like this where it's so close on a body, but because it's so close, it almost turns abstract and, and you start to re- Look at it a different way. So I really like the direction already and the shot choice. This is a really bold way of opening. I can't even figure out what that accent is. I want to say it's like Italian, East Coast, but but also it sounds kind of old timey. What is this person even doing to the face? Is that just, oh, it's just makeup. Okay. Purely off of tone, I think this is a pretty dark movie. I think this ends up being like a gangster flick just based on the music. It, it really does give me like Goodfellas vibes. Weirdly, I know that doesn't make any sense with this shot, but I really like it though. There's a legend that precedes the dawn of our civilization. A vile god, so large and so powerful that it consumed entire planets as fuel. Few believe such a thing could be true until the day we saw Unicron with our own eyes. <laughs> That voice, it was immediately unsettling and too too much. It was a really nice voice. It has some crispiness to it, I really, and I like crispy voices. <sighs> this seems like it would be Transformers. That's my immediate guess. I think just this big kind of robotic thing in the end made me feel like Transformers, and I haven't seen any of those movies. It's a little generic, um, and it doesn't really get me excited about the film. Everything besides the voice itself is, I would say, pretty by the books. Yeah, I'm locking in Transformers. Transformers, though. I'm super confident about that. And I think the film itself is just going to get really boring from here on out. More of this bullshit. What? What is that? Genuinely, genuinely, what the fuck is this? At first you're like, okay, Halloween, spooky, Scooby-Doo. I'm thinking Scooby-Doo. Then it pans down, you see one KISS logo, and I guess the KISS people, and I'm like, okay, nice little cameo, KISS, whatever. And then it keeps going, and there's KISS World. And this is a whole KISS theme park. <laughs> what the- why- why does this exist? And why would a movie have this? As far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's a KISS cartoon out there. If there is, I'm really out of touch. I'm still gonna lock in Scooby-Doo weirdly. There is something spooky and mysterious about KISS. Maybe one of the KISS members, they're gonna take off the mask and it's not KISS. I'm locking in Scooby-Doo. 
Um, but also, what the fuck is this movie? I have no idea what this is. <laughs> All of these people look weird, especially that guy in the back. It's happy. Okay, so there's a few where there's a few places I'm going with this. First one is Requiem for a Dream because I remember like a big part of that movie was that she's watching TV. Then there's a TV show. It's been a few years. I'm a little rusty, but I, I remember the the shouting and the TV it, it being like this, like they're shooting from outside of the TV, so it, there's like the effect. Yeah, for a film to start like this, even if it's not Requiem for a Dream, it's a really abrupt start because it's outside of the TV. It's it is kind of like who's watching this? Something's off. Anything that paints. TV TV, which is supposed to be a comforting thing in a sort of disturbing light is gonna be a disturbing movie And that's why I, I feel like it's Requiem for a Dream not just because I recognize it But also yeah, this is a this is a bold abrupt way of starting a film Dude, I'm so hungry while recording this video, just to be honest, and that looks incredible. <laughs> I just had a little bit of lunch after that, and now that I'm looking at this from a realistic point of view, that's way too much cheese. Based on the color grade, I'm thinking 2000s. I'm thinking 2000s comedy. It's a super recognizable color. It's like deep contrast, wide angle lens, the pants. I don't know what this pattern is. They look like pajamas, and, and I think the design is very 2000s. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a shitty movie. The, the lens is a little tacky if you don't do it right. A little not natural. I don't think the actor is very good even at this small action it goes on for too long for what it is yeah i'm gonna say it's kind of lousy i i think it's it's a weak shot weak shot wow Damn. I think this is my favorite thing we've seen so far today. And I, you know, I don't think we can really count this as an opening shot. These are, these are several shots, but I get, I see the, the logic behind choosing this. Honestly, it, it gets me to like rethink eyes a little bit. Like these are beautiful eyes. And I am like, these exist in our world, right? That's beautiful. I'm assuming these are uh, crocodiles or toads or turtles. What are these? They're definitely not crocodiles. I think it's a, I think it's a turtle. No idea what this film could be. I'm going to say it's a documentary. Based on the aspect ratio and uh, vibes-wise, I think it's a little bit older. Maybe it was made for TV, which is why it makes me think documentary. But I love this way of opening the film, and I love the editing, the cross-dissolves, and the close-ups. It immediately gets you to look at the subject in a different way, which I think is what the documentary is aiming to do in general. So yeah, perfect way of opening. Uh, beautiful to look at. Perfect. No notes. Oh. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. I know what this is. It's a big fat lie, right? I mean, Frankie Muniz, um, covered in paint. A little bit of a foreshadow for what's to come. I, I love stuff like this because, you know, it starts off kind of, like, confusing, <laughs> right? Like, why is Frankie Muniz in that position? Um, and that usually leads to laughs, right? The unexpected. I think this is a solid opening shot. And if it is Big Fat Liar, I don't remember Big Fat Liar a whole lot, so I can't really speak on how good that film is. But based solely on the opening shot, I think this is fine. I think it's a, a comfort watch, a decent time. Interesting. Love that opening, to be honest. I think it's beautiful looking. I think the city looks stunning. I love the fact that it just slowly pulls back and it's continuing to reveal new information. It's like it keeps you on edge. Oh, we're in the sky. What is that about? And then we're in the city and we're like trying to figure out what the city is. And then we see a girl. And no, it's not a girl. She's in a building. We hear the sound. She's in a hospital. And then whatever this text means. I don't, that's very vague, but I like it. I like it. I think this is a beautiful opening shot that lures you in is very mysterious but very fragile about how it goes about it it's very intentional that's that's the word i was looking for. and yeah i think it looks really great i love how patient it is how slow it is i love the attention to the sound i think this is incredible and i would love to watch this movie this this looks amazing <laughs> Fuck 
that specific color of the ocean reminds me of the master and i want to say it's the master i don't know what that is it looks like a juice box the music is kind of eerie it's it's really mysterious but perfectly symmetrical look at that line look at that horizon that's amazing i mean yeah immediately it's it's gorgeously shot um definitely something higher brow i would say i hope this isn't like meg 2 or some bullshit like that i think it looks incredible um i i, I really like the way this looks it makes me want to rewatch the master even if it isn't John, I hate to disappoint, but I know exactly what movie this is. It's Mamma Mia 2, Here We Go Again. I saw that shit twice in theaters. I distinctly remember how it started. I don't know what to say when I'm so... I've never been this sure before. Still a great movie. Uh, I know that was a long time ago, but that's still a great movie. The opening shot is fine. I will say it is a little generic. It's a little generic for what it could be. A drone across the ocean, sure. But I still think it looks nice. I think it sets the tone of like, just like the characters, we're gonna go on vacation here. Just leave all your problems outside. Enjoy these two hours of pure cinematic escapism. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's Mamma Mia 2. It's one of the best. It's one of the best. Get the fire started. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> I think this sucks already. And I I'm, I love Chicago. How can you make such a beautiful skyline look this ugly? Horrible music choice. Such a short shot. You don't even really get to linger on it. The camera that this video is shot on is probably nicer than whatever they used for this. The grade is ugly. It's just, it's so boring. It's so Whoa, fuck you. I hate this movie. Whatever this is, I hate this movie. I'm already bored. I'm already disappointed. It's it's definitely a lifetime film. Definitely. No doubt. Ooh. Um Well, so obviously Jurassic Park. I don't think that required that much effort. Um, even just looking at the egg before we even saw that eye at the end, that just kind of confirmed it. I mean, not the original Jurassic Park because of how modern this looks. I'm going to go with Jurassic World, but definitely locking in one of the Jurassic World movies. People are going to say what they're going to say about those, but that's a pretty solid opening shot in my opinion. What I think is so special about that shot and that what sets it apart from being kind of a generic thriller opening is the fact that it's not just one egg it's multiple and they're all cracking at the same time i think the vfx on the cracks look really nice i think it's it looks intriguing i think it looks cool and as is the case with those films it's like usually there's a few hits in there usually they do know what they're doing but 90 percent of the film is going to be trash and that is kind of the vibe i get from this the score is a little generic which is a little teaser for what's to come it's just going to be a really generic movie but the opening shot you gotta give credit where credit's due. I, I think it looks pretty great and it gets me interested. Gets me interested. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can, I can get out of this one. But this, I, I don't think, plays it safe. I do think this is interesting. I mean, it establishes where we are, and then it hands over to a pretty interesting shot, honestly. I like the way that the the lines are are framed, branch coming in, the, what is that, a fern? I'm thinking we're doing a crime thing here, just based on all the shadows and, and how the camera's kind of lurking in the back. It does seem like the thing I can easily lock into. I mean, there's already a lot of attention being put towards the frame. It's already pretty interesting, in my opinion. I'm there for it. Kaye? Uh, could be Casablanca, because that's also Casa... That's Spanish, right? I, I would happily watch this film. And here is our final film. I think I'm getting really good at guessing these movies. And I might eat those words when I check the cheat sheet in a second, but for some reason I see Pet Supply 
I'm thinking Ace Ventura. It's the kind of like generic thriller, eerie score that they don't use for actual thrillers, but they use in comedies to kind of simulate that. Which is why I think it, it would fit perfectly at the top of Ace Ventura. Could also be 101 Dalmatians, I guess. But why would, I don't think so. I don't think that. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit generic. It, the script is literally probably like, it was a dark and stormy night. You may as well start it with the alarm clock going off. You know, that's how generic this is. But I will say, uh, you know, eerie score, pet shop, that gets me excited um, because what is happening inside that pet shop? I don't know. It's okay. It's not, it's certainly not the best thing in the world. It's, it could be a hell of a lot more interesting, but you know, we'll take it. I'll, I'll continue watching. And those are the films. Now it's time to go over the cheat sheet and see how well I did. I think I killed it. Okay. Number one was 500 days of summer. <laughs> Damn, I'm not that crazy about that movie. Why would they start it like that? Why would... What? That's such a strange way to open a rom-com. I guess maybe the whole thing is that it's like a movie about, um, like, how... No, that whatever I was gonna say, that was bullshit. Number two is Brigadoon. Never heard of it. It is from the 50s, so I was right that it, it is a little bit older. It's a musical fantasy. I got that. This is... I've never... I'll be completely honest with you. I've never heard of this movie, but it looks really great. Number three is Gia. That does sort of match the vibe I was thinking. Very late 90s. I've never seen Gia, but I get the vibe. I get the vibe. Number four... Please be Transformers, please. Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I never saw that movie, and uh, I heard there's, like, robot monkeys. I don't I don't need to see that movie. Number five, <gasps> it is Scooby-Doo. I knew it. I just, it was something about the animation style, um, and, but the kiss thing. Scooby-Doo and kiss rock and roll mystery. Why does, and in 2015, why did they make that? Why did they make that movie? That's the real mystery. Why was this, blah, 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 blah. number six, Requiem for a Dream. Yes, dude. Fucking, I killed it, man. I, oh, that makes me so happy. I mean, nothing to say there. Uh, makes me want to rewatch Requiem for a Dream if you haven't seen it. It's a pretty great film. Number seven was Step Brothers. So that is either John C. Riley or Will Ferrell. And I called whoever that was a bad actor, which I take, I take it back. I take it back. I haven't seen Step Brothers, admittedly. I was right that it was a comedy, though. I was able to pinpoint that color grade. Number eight was Cane Toads, an unnatural history. <laughs> It literally is just a documentary about toads. I don't know where John found that film. Where'd you find that Scooby-Doo movie too? That's so random. Cain Toads, weirdly, one of the best looking films on this list. I will happily check that out. Number nine, Agent Cody Banks. I completely forgot about the rest of Frankie Munez's filmography. I just got Giamatti on the mind. Was never a Cody Banks kid, I'm gonna be honest. Number 10 was Weathering With You. I have heard of this one and I've heard great things about it, okay. That one's, that one's going up on the list. Number 11 was not the master. It was uh, Swiss Army Man. <laughs> I guess, you know, at this point, they're kind of prestigious filmmakers, the Daniels. Uh, but really funny, uh, considering the scene that this is. Number 12, Mamma Mia, here we go again. Yeah. Why even bother looking? I knew that one by heart. That one's in my veins. Number 13, The Princess Switch. Whatever the fuck The Princess Switch is, I have no interest in in learning anything more about it. Number 14, Was Jurassic World Right on the Money? Yeah, I guess, I mean, out of all the Jurassic World movies, that one's probably the best. It has the least amount of problems. It has that one scene with that, like, big shark that's insane number 15 was the exterminating angel that's uh that's louis right that is that's the boy i need to watch that one he's he's a really great director and i've been meaning to get on that and number 16 is beethoven i don't remember a whole lot about beethoven as a kid i i remember not really being that into it don't really feel the need to revisit beethoven <laughs> but yeah i did a pretty good job this time it was a little too easy i'll be honest maybe next time i tell john to get some really obscure strange shit if you have uh suggestions don't tell me because that doesn't do anything you message john on Twitter. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, go watch these films and form your own opinions. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to go to build a website and make that idea of yours come to life. They have this feature called Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system that allows you to customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. As someone going into filmmaking, someone who makes videos on the internet for a living, I'm a big fan of their video collection feature, which allows you to host video content, organize your video library, and show showcase your content on beautiful video 
pages. And to make creating the website that much easier, they have an asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all your content from one place and manage all of those files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Literally, it's it's amazing. It's so helpful. You can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch that beautiful website, go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase. Mm.